Hello everyone. I need that beer or this beer after a hard day working outside doing stuff around the house. Anyway, I'm John Flynn from Flynn Real Estate in Niagara Falls serving Southern Ontario. Here to give you my honest and professional opinion about the real estate housing market. Sellers are in denial. This is the theme of this video. I've been meaning to do this for a while. I wanted to see if I can get any stock market kind of analytics or analysis because there's so many comparables or similarities to the real estate market and the stock market. If you look at a graph, like go look at one, it's just like everything's just shot up and there's so many investors involved in the market. So it's like, okay, how do I approach this? What indicators do I use? There's not many, obviously I can't do um, candles and whatnot. You know, I'd have to like, it's just, it's just something you can't do. The data is just not there. But I do have a couple of things that I, I'm gonna do and um, I think you'll find them pretty interesting. So let's get right into this. This is gonna be all stats today. No news, no mortgage rates, none of that stuff, even though we're up a little bit. So first, I just wanted to put like the market into perspective. Just, you know, we still are up 20% year over year from, from 2021 to 2022, which is, which is huge, right? Now we are trending down, but I wanted to kind of put it into perspective to how far we've come and how far we're, we're going down. So if we look at this, this first graph, and again, this is my Ontario market information, everything excluding GTA. So it's a, it's a good representative sample size of data. So I just wanted to point out this here. In February 2020, it was the high. That was the high of the year, just like this year, for some reason. And of course, March, the pandemic kind of hit midway, or actually it was St. Patrick's Day. I know because I'm drinking the Guinness here. It hit in March. So March was kind of an off month. It was, you know, partial numbers. And of course, April was the low. And we lost 6.9%. The market dropped 6.9% in two months. Now fast forward to 2022, different circumstances, and the market has gone in two months from the February high, 8%. So a pandemic took it down 6.9% in two months, but rising interest rates have taken it down further. And of course, you know, it looks like it's gonna keep going. So yeah, what was, what was the differences besides the pandemic, right? After it hit the low, we had quantitative easing, money printing, and low interest rates. 0.25% on the overnight Bank of Canada rate. Fast forward to today, we don't know where it's gonna go. I'm guessing it's gonna trend downward, but who knows? We have quantitative tightening, reduced money printing with uh, no G on the end of printing, <laughs> and a 1% Bank of Canada rate. So higher rates, less money. So th the chances of it trending upwards like it did in 2020 are pretty slim if you ask me. But anyway, that's, that's, that's what I have to say. That's my opinion about it. Then I went back and I compiled data and, and I can, again, I had to like do this manually and form a graph in Google, um, Google charts or Google sheets and I use a chart. So this again, average sale price, but it's going back 30 years or even 31 years. I went back to 1992. So 30 years back, there's been a 590% increase in 30 years. And it's an average of 6.9% year over year. Of course, it compounds, right? So, um, but just, just to kind of take that into perspective, real estate's gone up like six times what it was 30 years ago. And I'm sure your people's wages haven't gone up. And again, I've talked about that in previous videos and I'm sticking to my story. And then I plotted out the year over year average percent increase in sale prices. So did it go up 5%, 2% a year, whatever it is. Inflation is two to 3% the target. And I don't have an inflation graph, but you can go match this to inflation, but I'm sure this is a lot higher than the average inf inflation. And I broke it down by a 10 year span from 1993 to 2002, it went, went up 2.87%, not so bad. This was, this was normal times. From 2003 to 2012, even with the 2008 crash where it lost 10%, it is still 6.07% for that, for that average. Now, 2013 to 2022, we have an average yearly increase of 12.03, so 12% every year. For the last 10 years, real estate on average has gone up 12%. Of course, it was 27% and then 20% in the last two years, but you average it out, it's still 12% a year, which is like, that's better than most investments, high-risk investments, and real estate is usually considered low-risk. So again, just, just setting the stage here to show 
how it's changed over the decades. Then I got into, can I use any like stock market or asset indicators uh, or analysis, technical analysis on real estate? And I said, okay, maybe I can use the, the FIB retracement, the Fibonacci retracement, because it kind of, you can apply it. And I, I believe you can fairly apply it here. Again, I'm using a large sample size. So I said, okay, let's, let's try, let's try to do a FIB retracement on it. And for those of you who don't know what a Fibonacci retracement is, go look it up. Some of you will, may know, but it's, it's a major indicator used to, uh, that investors or stockbrokers use for a signal. So it's one of them. They use multiple ones when they're, when they're making their bets. And I call them bets because that's what, <laughs> what the stock market is a lot of the time. Um, they use this and it's a proven tool. So I wanted to go back here to the 2017 peak. And again, we're using a, a low to high range and you have to use a movement. You're looking for a, a whole movement in, in a market. So there's certain levels marked out on a, on a FIB retracement that are you know proven through mathematical equations. The first one's a 23.6, then it's a 32.8, I believe, then a 50%. And, and these are major movements that people see, major retracement levels. So in 2017, into 2018, I think it was until the end of 2017, it retraced back at the 61.8 level or the 6.618, 61.8% level. And it went from 402 to 501 and it traced back to 439.818. So it, it, again, this is like a mathematical science that people use in stocks. And we hit one of the major levels in 2017. So now I say, okay, let's let's use this FIB retracement on the current market. And again, I took the low of when the market started to take, up, take off, and that was in April 2020, fair to say, and it went crazy. So we had this massive spike, and we peaked at 983 for the average price in Ontario, excluding GTA. And here we have the levels. So it looks like we're going to blow past the first level of the 23.6 percent which would be 875 we're almost there we're at like 90 something right now like just over 900 we're, we're almost at that and we're we're in a pretty sharp downward trend so i say we're going to blow, blow by that then we get to the 38.2 that's just over 800 grand 50 percent are we going to go 50 or are we going to make it to the 61.8 like we did last time that would put us at just over 700,000. that's almost a 30 percent correction which I could see a 20 to 40% correction in this market because it's just, it's gone up so high. It's insane, right? And the bottom one, excuse my numbers, I put the wrong number. It was supposed to be 78.6 was the lowest blue level there. But I, well, are we going to make it to the 78.6 retracement level? Who knows, right? But this is, this isn't, these are, are major indicators and we're already headed for the first one. So it's something to keep an eye on. And I'm going to, I'm going to save this graph and refer back to it in, in the future just to see where we land so then i said okay let's let's put in the mean reversion line you know where everything uh, a theory is not everything but a theory is like prices revert back to a mean and it's hard to get a mean but i i drew a line a mean line through the data and of course we got a long way to go so if we we're going to hit the mean like we're going to revert back to the for sure the the, the 61.8 level if not again sorry for the wrong number here the 78.6 level the lowest one so the lowest green or the lowest blue, and that's those. Those are big numbers. Those are those are 30, 40 percent reduction in prices. And again, this is this is one way of analyzing it, but it's 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 a very well used and well known way. So yeah, let me know what you think, and if you know there, if there's any other ways to analyze like we do with stocks, because again, we are dealing with a market now. It's this is not just real estate prices from people buying homes. This is this is an asset class. Which brings me to my next point. So I said there's the, there's the five or sorry four phases, depending on who you ask. But again, the, the phases of a asset bubble. Can we apply that to real estate? And I believe we can. And we'll take a look at it. And we'll go through the definitions and see how it relates to what's been happening in the market. So here you might have seen this graph in the past, but this is a the stages of the of an asset bubble. And of course, it start you know the smart money, institutional investors, public. And you get, you go up the graph and it gets into greed and delusion and then back to denial. This is where I believe we're in the deni denial phase right now, but we'll, we'll take a, a closer look at it and who knows how we're going to go on the downside, but this is again, fear, capitulation and so, and so on. 
Um, there's four phases, the stealth phase, the awareness phase, the mania phase, and the blow-off phase. So let's put this theory on top of our current real estate prices and see what we get. And, and we'll go through the phases just so we can talk about them. So I've applied this theory to the current real estate market using the same graph. So the stealth phase from anywhere, and this is this is just generalization, but anywhere from you know 2011 on, and then we have the awareness phase, and there's different here. There's not smart money and in institutional investors in public. It would be more like smart money investors, new investors slash public, right? Uh, but again, you can use whatever wording you want. So the first sell-off was in 2017, as we already discussed. They had a 61.8 retracement and uh, back to the 440 range approximately. And then we get into the mania phase. And this is what we just went through. We just finished the mania phase in February. And we got, we, we got media attention. We had tons of enthusiasm. Greed. I don't want to call people greedy, but there was a lot of greed. Everyone wants to get in on it. We had lots of FOMO. Delusion. And this is, this is the delusion was like the prices are never going to go down, right? And it, it, people still say that to me. They're never going to go down, down, which again brings us over the, t the peak here, the, over the new paradigm or past the new paradigm to denial. They're still in denial. Well, they're just, it's going to slow, but they won't go down too much further. And, you know, people need homes. Well, yeah, people need homes, but investors need investments. And this is an investment chart here, an investment stages of, of bubbles, right? So, of course, we're going to go to fear, capitulation, and despair. So what are the stages? So let's get to the stealth phase. Number one, those who understand the new fundamentals realize an emerging opportunity for substantial future appreciation, but at risk since their assumptions are so far unproven. So the smart money gets invested in the asset class and it goes on to say whatever. The awareness, many investors start to notice the momentum just like they did. 2015 was a huge time and, and it just kept going into 2017. The market was crazy. And again, driven by investors. There were so many investors and, and the public was involved, but it was it was honestly the investors drove this market and it, it, they have been for a while. So bringing additional money in and pushing prices higher. There can be a short lived sell off phase taking place as few investors cash in on their first profits. So the sell off was they started to raise interest rates a bit. You know, there's always a trigger for a sell off phase, but they figured that's a good time. They cashed in more uh, mortgage rates went up a little bit and they took some profits. And the smart money takes this opportunity to reinforce its existing positions. In the later stage, stages of this phase, the media starts to notice with positive reports about how the new boom benefits the economy by creating wealth. Those getting in becoming increasingly unsophisticated. This is where we get into anyone, the mania. The mania, this is what we just went through and this is, this is, the, this is the majority of the insanity with the prices. Everyone is noticing that prices are going up and the public jumps in for this investment opportunity of a lifetime. A lot of it was investment. A lot of it was, I'm, if I don't buy one now, I'm never going to be able to afford one. But again, you got to get in on the investment opportunity. The expectations about future appreciation become a no brainer and a linear interference mentally sets in. Future prices are an extrapolation of the past price appreciation, which of course goes against any conventional wisdom. However, this phase is not about logic, but about psychology. Floods of money come in, creating even greater expectations and pushing prices to the stratos to stratospheric levels. The higher the price, the more investments pour in. That's like, like so many investments, right? This is what happened with real estate. Fairly unnoticed from the general public caught in this new frenzy, the smart money as well as many institutional investors are quietly pulling out and selling their assets. Unbiased opinion about the fundamentals become increasingly difficult to find as many players are heavily invested and have every interest to keep the asset inflation going. The market gradually becomes more exuberant as paper fortunes are made from regular investors and greed sets in. Everyone tries to jump in and new entrants have absolutely no understanding of the market, its dynamics, and fundamentals. Prices are bid up with all financial means possible, particularly leverage and debt. If the bubble is linked with lax sources of credit, then it will endure far longer than many observers would expect, therefore discrediting many rational assessments 
that the situation is unsustainable. At some point, statements are made about entirely new fundamentals implying a permanent high plateau has been reached to justify future price increases. The bubble is about to collapse. And I've seen all of this. I've seen the, um, they discredit the rational assessments. I, I've talked about this rationality, this market's not sustainable. And people just, no, it's never going to go down, right? They don't care. They don't want to listen to it. And of course, they refer to new fundamentals that, you know, real estate, uh, there's too, too many people. The population is growing. There's not enough homes. And, and these are the new fundamentals when I see them building homes everywhere. I think that these builders that are that are building them right now are going to have a hard sell or they're going to have a lack of closings or people are not going to be able to close on them when the time comes. Now we get into the blow off where we just entered it, in my opinion. Maybe we didn't, but I truly believe we did. And there's like tons of evidence to back it up. Blow off. A moment of epiphany. A trigger arrives interest rates that will going to keep going up. This is the trigger and not not the supply and demand that's coming in 10 years from now or the supply. It's the trigger is interest rates in this case. And everyone roughly at the same time realizes the situation has changed. Confidence and expectations encounter a paradigm shift, not without a phase of denial. We're in this denial right now, even though we have shifted, but we're in the denial phase where many try to reassure the public that this is just a temporary setback. Some are fooled, but not for long. Many try to unload their assets, but takers are few. Everyone is expecting further price declines. The house of car cards collapse under its own weight. And latecomers, com commonly the general public, or in this time, actual end user buyers, are left holding depreciating assets while the smart money pulled out a long time ago. Prices plummet at a much faster rate than the one that inflated the bubble. Many over leveraged asset owners go bankrupt, triggering additional waves of sales. There's even the possibility that the valuation undershoots the long term mean, implying a significant buying opportunity. However, the general public at this point considered the sector as the worst possible investment one can make. This is the time when the smart money starts acquiring assets at low prices. So again, I see this coming. People say, well, I'll just wait to buy when, when everyone sells. Well, if you look at Bitcoin or if you look at anything, when people start to sell, you're like, and, and, and it's a good and it's a good deal, right? Nobody wants it anymore. People only want it when it's when everyone else wants it. And when that happens, the prices are on their way up and they're usually overinflated. But when they're deflated, nobody wants it. The, they're they're scared. They don't want to buy it. The the fundamentals in their mind doesn't make sense, and the psychology doesn't make sense. Let me know what you think of my. Um, use of the analysis tools or the indicator tools that I use today to kind of, you know, overlay them on the real estate market. Because again, I believe that real estate is like a is like the stock market these days. It's an asset. It's investor driven, and investors they buy and investors sell, and that's what's going to make it more scary is the sell off from the investors. And we're we're headed there, right? The the numbers don't lie, and we'll see. Is it going to continue down or is it going to reverse? Anyway, again, thanks for watching and like, subscribe, share, do what you have to do to get this video out and I will see you next time.